Good morning and welcome to the Malvern College Virtual Open Day. Thank you so much for joining us and we really hope that you find this morning's session helpful in finding out more about the school and discovering if we're a good match for your son or daughter. We've enjoyed a lovely few weeks of autumnal sunshine uh, and I can't quite believe we're already in October and heading towards half term. One good thing about a virtual event, however, is that we don't have to battle uh, the more traditional autumn weather and uh, have our umbrellas at the ready for the tour. So that is one bonus about today. My name is Anna Louise McQuilkin. I'm the head of admissions here at college. And I'll just uh, go through the running order for today so that you know what to expect. In a few minutes, we'll hear from our headmaster, Mr. Keith Metcalf, who will introduce Malvern College and its underlying ethos and values of the school. Then Mr. Lewis Faulkner, who is our deputy head pastoral, will cover the pastoral side of school life and uh, the very important support and community of which we're a part. Mr. Stephen Holroyd, our deputy head curriculum, will give an overview of the academic side of life at the different stages um, of school, the lower school and the sixth form. Mrs. Fiona Packham is the house mistress at number three, and she'll give an insight into life in a boarding house at Malvern College. And then very importantly, we'll hear from two of our current pupils, Amy and Jacob, who will share their own experiences of college. Just a few uh, housekeeping matters uh, and, and Zoom information. We very much welcome your questions throughout today's sessions and you can submit your questions using the Q&A function, which is uh, indicated by the double speech bubble on your Zoom screen. You can submit those questions anonymously if you wish, and they'll either answer, be answered by text or live at the end of everybody's presentations. Please do ask any questions of which you're not sure. In the background today, we're helped by uh, George Stringer, our digital marketing manager, who's making sure that everything goes well from a technical side, and also by Sally Cooper New, who's our director of marketing and admissions, who'll be helping answer your questions. I'd now like to introduce Mr. Keith Metcalf, our headmaster, who will talk about the holistic approach to teaching and learning at college and the Malvern qualities which are embedded in all aspects of the school. Mr. Metcalf. Uh, well, thank you, Anna Louise, and good morning to you all. Thank you for joining us. As Anna Louise says, welcome to Malvern College as Storm Alex passes overhead. It, it's good to be able to do this, um, even if it's just virtually. So a brief introduction from me and focusing particularly on why Malvern is so special uh, and why we do the things that we do and, and a little bit about why we do them in that way uh, before I hand over to some of the others to give you their experiences. So our purpose uh, is to create a transformational learning environment where we're developing outstanding young people who have the intellectual ability uh, and academic qualifications to get to the universities or the careers uh, that they want to. Uh, developing and nurturing the emotional and cultural intelligence so that they have the social skills and the uh, self-confidence, the inner confidence, so that they can work with uh, and lead others. Uh, as well as then all those skills, the initiative, uh, the willingness to, to grasp opportunities, to overcome challenges, so that ultimately they're ready to flourish in what is a rapidly changing global world that we live in. I, I think it's fair to say that at heart we're an academic school. Uh, we're not a hothouse, uh, but at whatever level you come in at, we believe that we can help you reach your intellectual potential. Uh, our top pupils are amongst the elite in the country, uh, and unsurprisingly, they achieve excellent grades and enter the top universities, whether that's in the UK, uh, the US uh, or across Europe, too. Uh, I'd say we're also extremely good with those candidates in the middle. And this is an area of particular focus, uh, developing those pupils who've got a range of skills uh, and exciting them about the opportunities intellectually uh, and academically to develop curiosities, to, uh, curiosity and energy and enthusiasm. And in some ways, it's in those areas that we make the biggest differences, uh, turning good pupils into fantastic ones. Uh, and in some ways, they could often be the ones who end up being so successful because they've had to work out and, and learn from uh, the, the, the people around them on how to be really successful uh, in this wide world uh, and developing those wider skills, uh, in, uh, intelligent skills, but also emotional uh, leadership uh, collaboration. Some of those Malvern qualities that you've probably come across uh, on our website. 
Uh, to, to make it simpler, in a way, to, to understand how we mean holistic and transformational, we divide our learning into to four areas that all combine and work together. Uh, at the heart, there's the core curriculum, which focuses on our academic uh, timetable uh, and GCSEs or A-level and IB. We have our super curriculum, which is the academic enrichment program that sort of sits over the top of all those things, uh, making or helping our pupils uh, broaden their horizons, uh, look beyond the, the normally or sometimes narrow confines of exam curriculum. There's our co-curriculum, all the variety of activities, whether that's the sport, the art, the music, uh, the drama, uh, the areas of service and, and uh, outdoor pursuits or CCF, where they develop an, a wide range of those transferable skills and more qualities. Uh, and it's all underpinned by the pastoral care, uh, the, the, the support that we give to your pupils. We, we really believe that if your pupils, if, if our pupils, sorry, your sons and daughters, if they're happy, if they're healthy, uh, then they're going to thrive. Uh, and you're going to hear a little bit about each of those from the, the various staff, uh, but also from some of the pupils today. We have a beautiful site, and it's a shame that you can't see it. Uh, we have some amazing facilities, uh, but in the end, it, it all comes down to the people that are part of this great community. They're the ones who set the example, they support your children, uh, and we really believe in only appointing the best staff, training, training them and, and supporting them, uh, appraising them, uh, and because they're the ones who are going to set those examples, uh, and working with the pupils and particularly the senior pupils uh, to set the tone. So I'm going to hand over to some of those people now uh, and a chance for you to, to hear from them and to ask some of your questions too. So I hope you have this, uh, I hope you enjoy uh, this experience uh, and we look forward to seeing you in real life uh, when there's a chance to do that soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Metcalf. And we'll now hand over to Mr. Lewis Faulkner, our Deputy Head Pastoral, to uh, give an overview of the pastoral side of college life. Mr. Faulkner. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Lewis Faulkner. I'm the Pastoral Deputy Head and I'll be giving an overview of the pastoral life in the college. Uh, it's now my fourth year at Malvern. Uh, I teach biology and I'm speaking both as a teacher and a parent. I've got three children, the eldest of whom is due to join in September. Uh, prior to this role, I was housemaster for several years in a similar sort of school. Um, our pastoral care is centered around our 11 boarding houses. Each boarding house has between 55 and 60 pupils age between 13 to 18. Uh, and our boarding houses really do provide a home from home environment for the pupils and a springboard for them to tackle all the various challenges that Morven provides. Um, I think the sizes of the boarding houses are similar to the size of the school in the sense that they're large enough for a full range of opportunities, but small enough for everybody to be known as an individual. Uh, our day pupils are assigned to boarding houses. Uh, there are no separate day houses and boarding houses uh, and so teachers normally don't know if you're a board or a day pupil everyone is, is sort of mucks in and is cared for equally um, the school as a whole uh, if you visit it uh, you'll know uh, it's a beautiful campus um, I, I came from a, a city school uh, and it's lovely to be here in the Morven Hills it looks traditional um, and in many ways it is, but it's definitely not a stuffy environment. Uh, we work very closely with the pupils, we listen to their views uh, and open to new ideas. I think, in fact, a key feature you will see when you come to Malvern uh, is strong but relaxed relationships between students and teachers. Uh, and I think this partly stems from in-house dining, uh, which I think is a special feature of the college. Not many schools in the UK have retained uh, in-house dining and, and something we think is at the heart of our houses here at Malvern. There's a saying that a family that eats together keeps together and I think that's true. Um, I've taught at schools where there's a large central canteen uh, where pupils can sometimes feel a little lost. Uh, they, they'll go in and load their plate with chips and wolf it down within two minutes but it's not like that at Malvern. At Malvern our meal times are an important part of the, the day and an important point of pastoral contact. And I think all of this leads to the boarding houses feeling like an extended family. Um, it is, we are uh, a, a school with a full boarding ethos and a full boarding feel. Uh, we are uh, at the moment 77% boarding and 23% day. 
uh, our day students can stay, they can have supper in house and they can stay late to get their homework done in house or in the library. Uh, and there's lots going on at the weekends as well. We have Saturday morning school. I've just taught a lesson before rushing here. I've just taught my uh, my year nine biology class. Um, so we have lessons in the morning. We have games in the afternoon. I've got cross country this afternoon uh, and then activities in the evenings and on, on Sundays as well. So there's lots going on, uh, a vibrant boarding feel which day students can access as well. Um, and there's a good international mix as well, uh, ranging from very local Malvern families to families from all over the world. Uh, and this probably reflects the international mix of the workplaces that our, many of our students will enter. Uh, and I think you know, a chance to mix with people from different backgrounds and cultures is a really important part of being here. Um, I think of the Morven community as an interconnected web of people, uh, sort of an invisible web with the pupil at the centre. Um, and pupils have lots of sources of support. So you will have your house master or house mistress, uh, as well as other house staff, uh, what we call house assistants, uh, and a team of tutors as well. Uh, boarding tutors will come into the evening to, to help with homework, to you know, run bedtimes and, and to, to interact, to, to, to speak with the pupils. Um, we, each pupil is assigned an academic tutor as well. Uh, so probably in that first year, the house master or house mistress and the academic tutor are, are, are two really important uh, people in the lives of, of pupils. Um, have our medical centre, staff 24 hours a day. Uh, we have various student bodies, the school councils, what we call our Thrive Team, uh, peer mentors in all of the houses, and all of the houses are assigned a buddy as well when they joined. The underlying principle uh, with all of this is there's always somebody there to talk to, to support you. I think you're very much noticed and looked after as an individual. Um, and just to finish off with Morven as a, as a place to go to school, uh, these, these three years have shot by for me in Morven. Uh, it's a lovely place. I mean, it's an area of outstanding natural beauty. I'm a keen runner, so I'm often up on the hills. But I think Morven is a place, it's big enough, it has everything you need, railway station, banks, shops, cafes, restaurants, and so on. Um, and the campus itself has a, a, a lovely spacious feeling, 100 hectares, a real feeling of space, but also good links to Birmingham, Bristol, Worcester, um, and um, it, it, Morven as, as a place is not too big in itself either. So I think it's a really good mix. I'm certainly enjoying being here uh, and I very much hope that, that you will be able to visit when you can. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Faulkner. Um, we will now hand over to Mr. Stephen Holroyd, our Deputy Head Curriculum, for an overview of the academic side of school life. Mr. Holroyd. Good morning and thank you very much and, and welcome to our open day. Um, unlike Lewis, I've been here for considerably longer. I've, I've had 30 years at Malvern now. Um, but during that time, I've really focused on work in the curriculum, um, be that the academic core as a head of VUMT or IB coordinator, um, uh, running a variety of uh, activities through the co-curriculum and also supporting our pupils in, in, the, co in the super curriculum activities. I'm just going to share my screen now because there's uh, quite a lot of detail about the curriculum which perhaps would be better uh, shown on some slides. So um, I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, I hope, hope that, that works. So um, as, as I said, there's a, a, a variety of I think actually this, this, the screen share won't, won't really work. So I'll, I'll just go through my slides as, as, as normal. So the, the key thing we're looking at, at Malvern is through our whole curriculum to develop intellectual curiosity and a, a love of learning. And um, through the intellectual stretch, the intellectual challenge, the academic breadth, uh, through our collaborative research, through all of our, our major core academic years, um, these enable all of our pupils to go on to top universities across the world. Uh, we believe that the access and success also later on in life is based on his, this holistic view of education. Now in year nine, which is our foundation year, um, we're putting together a, a new year group uh, from diverse places. Many have been through common entrance, but many have come from different parts of the world. And so this foundation year, year nine, 
we, we do believe in that name for it, the foundation year. We're looking to develop a, a wide range of transferable skills. And in, in fact, we have a very distinct approach to our year nines. Uh, we have an FY passport. Uh, all of our academic curriculum are, are written around skill development as opposed to content, uh, which then allows them to access the GCSE, A-level and IB curriculums successfully. Uh, and we're looking at those technical skills, those, those IT skills, uh, the skills of communication, uh, but also we're, we're looking at some of the softer skills, some of the emotional skills, the resilience, the collaborative learning, the independence and the ambi ambition that we hope our pupils will develop with us, but particularly begin early on. So then we move into our GCSE years, which is years uh, uh, 10 and 11, our, our remove for our year 10 and our 100 for year 11. And, and we have a wide choice of, of GCSE options available uh, and, and a flexible programme. What we're trying to do with our GCSE A-level and IB programmes throughout those uh, four examination years is really to provide an individualised education for our pupils starting first of all with the choices they make for GCSE, IB or A-level, but then also augmenting that academic core with the super curriculum, of, of which I'll, I'll speak uh, more about later on, and also the co-curriculum. So they're not in contrast with each other, they're working uh, holistically with each other to develop those skills, those qualities that we believe will enable our pupils to thrive, not just here, not just at university, but as lifelong learners after they've left us. Then in our sixth form, uh, we have two paths to success. We, we've got the A-level path, um, uh, the, the traditional UK focus uh, on three or four A-level subjects. Um, if our pupils choose four subjects, uh, that is what they will follow through their two years. If they choose three subjects, we will also ask them to choose an enrichment uh, subject, an academic enrichment choice to augment their three subjects. And so, for example, they could do um, uh, uh, EPQ, the Extended Project Qualification, which is uh, writing a 5,000 word supported essay. Universities really like this uh, these days and often will in include that in their university offer. Uh, we also offer the um, AS and A-level in Global Perspectives. Um, some of our scientists who might not be doing A-level maths, we, we run our maths for scientists courses. We also um, this year invented a really interesting set of uh, courses called bridging courses, which help pupils bridge that gap between their sixth form and, um, uh, and university. So many of our pupils this summer who are leaving us maybe to study economics and business at university uh, did a short course in business law. Uh, we even pro provided some uh, courses for one or two people doing criminology. Uh, we also look at university writing courses as well. So you can augment your A-levels with, with further courses which help you move on. Um, also, some pupils do um, a new language courses as well. Um, then in our sixth form, which has a 50-50 split between A-level and IB, uh, we, we have our IB classes as well. We're looking at classes between six and, and 12 pupils. And we have a choice of around 26 different subjects. So if you're looking at the IB, um, this requires you to uh, study uh, three or four subjects at high level and uh, for the three subject at standard level. Uh, you then add on to that uh, the core, which is the creativity, action and service program, the theory of knowledge course, which looks at how do we know what we know, and also perhaps one of the most useful elements of the IB course is the 4,000 word independent extended essay, very much looking at um, bridging that gap between uh, school and university, uh, writing a fairly original research, um, really supported in a, in a quite hands-off way by, by, by teachers in a constructive way, but it's, it's very independent research where you learn the academic integrity, elements of citing and referencing and bibliography. Now, the IB is, as I said, the A-level is very much a traditional British route, but we've been teaching the IB for, for over 25 years now. We started teaching it, and in fact, I started teaching it back in 1992. And, and we are one of the top IB schools in the UK with a very consistent uh, performance at, at, IB, uh, at IB level. Uh, the total uh, uh, marks uh, is, is, is out of 45. Um, and we are consistently averaging well above 36 points uh, out, of, out of 45. 
over the last five years. Uh, and also over the last five years, we've had 350 pupils through Morven doing the IB, of which well over 100 have scored 40 point, points or more. Uh, and that's the sort of score that you're looking to get to access the top universities, not just in the UK, but also worldwide. So the IB, uh, just a little further detail on that, uh, requires you to do a, a language A, so you're a spoken language, most of our pupils are doing uh, English as a language A, they all have to do that, but they can also add in their own home language. A language B, so um, we, we offer uh, German, French, um, Italian, but also a language from start, so ab initio Italian and Spanish, and you can do classics as well. You then have to do uh, an, uh, an individual and society subject, so economics, geography, business, uh, and uh, philosophy and history. Um, we then have a range of mathematics courses that you all pupils have to do mathematics. Um, and then um, um, experimental sciences, which uh, range from biology and chemistry uh, to physics, and environmental science and sport, exercise and health science uh, as, as well. And then you can do electives such as the arts. Um, visual arts and also sometimes uh, rock music and, and sometimes drama. So running parallel to, to uh, our core academic curriculum and very much supporting our core academic curriculum is the super curriculum. This is pupil led. Um, it, it's, it's very much a, a, a set of societies and activities which respond to pupil tastes and choices. So societies come and go uh, depending on our, our pupil choices but also allows us therefore to further individualize the curriculum we offer. Some of these societies, such as the Politics and Foreign Affairs Society, it is very much linked into the academic curriculum or, or the Mead Reads, named after an economist at, at Morgan who won the Nobel Prize in 1977, has a very clear curriculum link. But then we have um, the societies looking at the, the, the um, slightly scarily named Hack Club, which looks at coding, uh, we have societies that, that look at writing. We have Freud in SIPS, uh, which is our psychology society. We have philosophy societies. Uh, we also have a, a society just started up by uh, a, a number of our keen, keen cricketers. Um, not so much to look at cricket in terms of watching matches, but they're very keen to look at the, the social context of cricket in different uh, countries, but also looking at the idea of cheating and, and what constitutes cheating. What is What are the ethics underlying uh, sport via a, a cricket medium as well. So the, it, it's pupil-led, wide range of uh, societies, and, and very much developing those skills of, of um, academic breadth, ac intellectual stretch, uh, independent study, but also collaborative research, working together um, to produce uh, uh, presentations and ideas. Um, and one of our very best uh, super curriculum societies is our Wheeler Bennett. It's our our, our sixth form academic society, which is uh, purely run by our sixth form pupils and chaired by them. Um, and in, in times pre-COVID, we were having over 140 pupils turning up to their uh, regular lectures and the question and answer sessions uh, run afterwards uh, were, were highly stimulating and, and really quite exciting. So where do our pupils go on? Well, 83% of our pupils go to their first choice university. Um, and 74% of these are from the elite universities, from Russell Group universities and the very best universities abroad. Uh, five to 10% of our pupils will go to universities overseas. We run our own SAT set, uh, testing centre here and have a, a highly expert team in helping our pupils apply for universities outside the UK. Some pupils defer entry, some pupils take gap years and some pupils also do degree apprenticeships as well. So we prepare pupils for Oxford and Cambridge, also uh, top choices of our uh, pupils going to the London universities, Edinburgh and Exeter. Uh, many also are heading to um, places such as Warwick, Leeds, Durham, Bath and Reading, but overseas Chicago, Harvard, uh, Northeast and McGill in Canada as well. So what do we think our curriculum offers? Well, harking back to um, uh, our head's introduction, we think it offers uh, transformational learning. It, it's about learning that is, 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 is focused on engaging pupils in learning rather than being compelled to learn for, for, for a, a, another driving reason. It's natural, it's not forced, it's, 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 it's long, taking a long-term view of people's, people's learning. 
It's learning through our core curriculum, it's learning through the super curriculum, and it's learning those transferable skills through our extensive co-curriculum as well. So we're looking to engender and encourage a love and passion for learning, um, both inside and outside the classroom. And I certainly believe that we really stretch and challenge every single pupil here through their Morgan College journey. So I hope, hope you enjoyed that overview of our curriculum and very happy to take questions later on in the open day and hope to see you here actually at Morgan and we can discuss the curriculum further. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Holroyd. Um, and we'll now hand over to uh, Mrs. Packham, uh, who's the house mistress at number three, to give a flavour of boarding life and what it's like to be a member of a special house community uh, within the college. Mrs. Packham. Hello, um, my name's Fiona and I'm a chemistry teacher. And um, I've also, oh, has that stopped? It looks like it's saying it stopped. I'm so sorry. I hope that's working, sorry. Um, as I said, I teach chemistry and I'm actually a house mistress of one of the five girls' houses um, that was mentioned earlier. As you can imagine, life in the houses has been slightly different from normal. So some of my descriptions here um, of life will be in a kind of pre-COVID scenario. Most of the houses in Morven are numbered and they go from one to nine. However, there are two that have names and those are Schoolhouse and Ellerslie House. And those make up the 11 houses that were mentioned by Mr Faulkner. The girls' houses are found down one side of the campus with the boys' houses down the other. However, they, do, they are able to meet in lessons and in some activities and during their free time on the triangle. And the triangle is the central grass area, which is above the senior cricket pitch. They can also meet at the Grub, which is our school tuck shop. Um, or even in the cafe 1865, which is down at our sports complex. There are really lots of opportunities to mix and meet up. The house spirit at Morven is really strong. Um, each house has its own color and the pupils wear either a badge or a tie in their house color. I'd say that the allegiance to the house becomes second nature almost immediately and tremendously fast. In fact, right from those first messages that are sent by the current pupils to welcome the new pupils into the Morven family. For the house staff, it's certainly a privilege to watch the friendships blossom and flourish as the pupils grow up in our houses. There are many into house competitions. These are engendering house spirit further. And there are the usual competitions, such as the major sports of hockey, rugby or tennis and others. Uh, but there are also those in minor sports, such as fives, water polo and more recently softball. Alongside these sporting events, there are competitions in music, incorporating both contemporary and classical. Science, which allows for problem solving opportunities. Drama, with the pupils choosing the play which they direct and also which they perform the extracts from. And there's also a technical theatre prize. Uh, there's a house art competition, which is called the Big Draw, usually on a Sunday afternoon in September. There are other talents that are catered for too, from shooting to esports. I really do feel that we try to cater for all interests and hopefully there's something for everyone. With such a busy programme, it is great to have leave out every three weeks. There are usually two per term, but in fact, there is only one in the summer term. All of our pupils leave just before lunch on a Friday, but they meet in the houses at break time for the big brunch, at which there's a wonderful atmosphere as anticipation, looking forward to a weekend of rest, catching up with family and friends at home, or perhaps staying with a guardian where they might have the chance to learn to cook or see a different town. Weekends at school are really fun too, with lessons on a Saturday morning, followed by an hour or two of sport or other activities, and then some free time. Perhaps there's that time to stroll into town for an hour or the opportunity to stock up on some tuck, meeting with friends from other houses for a coffee, or perhaps even indulging in a late afternoon pasta dish at Ask. Morven Town feels safe. It's not too large. And in fact, it's lovely for us as staff to bump into students in Waitrose or Wilkes, and they always say hello. On Saturday evenings, many houses will show a movie or give the pupils time to just relax in each other's company, much like they would at home with their siblings and parents. But you can also walk in the grounds, socialise with friends and meet up with others from other houses. There are occasionally in-house Saturday night events and these encourage the pupils to return to the house and chill with their Morven family. I feel that this gives the more shy student a chance to say, I've been out to meet everyone, but actually I, I need to go back to the house now. So they can get their chance to make those new friendships, but then come back to the security of somewhere where they really feel at home from home. Often they may bring friends back to the houses from other houses and they might share a takeaway, they could play pool or just simply sit and chat. 
Some houses have FIFA pool competitions or table co ten tennis competitions running throughout the term. Other houses will take on activities such as cookie baking or making pizzas. The number of pizza ovens around the uh, houses gardens is increasing rapidly by the day uh, to give opportunities for, for making pizzas. Um, later on this year, my house will be making and painting Christmas decorations. On Sundays, the day starts a lot later with a well-earned lion. There are often whole school activities in the afternoon or late morning. There could be a trip to Birmingham or Worcester for shopping or the cinema. We last week had uh, an on-site fun fair. We have theatre trips, bubble football, and also crazy foot golf. And I have to be honest, I'm really not too sure what that is yet, but by the end of tomorrow evening, I'll know exactly what it is and I can tell you more. Sometimes there are Sunday house activities such as fundraising afternoons of football or trips to, the, trips to the Christmas market, the escape rooms or even laser quest. Occasionally on Friday evenings, there are tutor outings too, where these take the form of the meals as a tutor group in town or a visit to the cinema or perhaps to ice skating. And it might be one or two tutor groups will join up together. And so the staff have some friendship as well as they're, uh, as they're taking their duties along. The Morven boarding houses operate a buddy system where each new pupil is allocated a buddy. This is an older pupil who's their first point of contact. And a couple of times of term, we will have a buddy break time when they all meet and chat, sharing their experiences of their first few weeks and months. The buddies will also write letters to welcome the new pupils before the term starts and contacting them via email as well. There really is a lovely mix of years. The friendship and camaraderie at boarding is a perfect if your child is an only child, acquiring many surrogate siblings in one go, or perhaps your eldest child would be able to join and, and gain a big brother or big sister. And for the youngest in your family, it would be their opportunity to start to be a big brother or big sister to someone else. We feel that we really do have a great mix of boarding and day and our pupils really are fully integrated. We've worked hard to perfect that. The integration of our day pupils is something we're proud of. And we often pop back to the house on a Sunday as they miss their school siblings so much. They're always welcome and the boarders do enjoy seeing them. And for those pupils whose parents are overseas or at the opposite end of the UK, it's another useful connection as leave out weekends are the perfect opportunity for a sleepover. The house and family and their pets live in the house like a big family and with the live-in deputy or assistant and other house staff will visit as well during the day with the tutors and day assistants and they all contribute to our more than house families. The family feel extends to the domestic and catering staff too with the house chef being a truly central figure. The house really is a base during the school day and it's like a second home. They come home at break time or tea time for a cup of tea or toast, coffee and fruit um, and they can invite their friends from other houses at those times as well. We nurture and encourage our pupils to make the most of their opportunities, but also to work hard to meet their goals. This means that the boarding experience at Malvern really is one of growing up in a large extended family. There will, of course, as with all families, be the occasional arguments or disagreements. People will get tired and so misunderstandings can occur but it's the way in which our pupils are helped to navigate through these difficult times that strengthens their characters, allowing them to make relationships with others stronger and thus enabling them to flourish in all they do as they move on into the world beyond Morven. And I hope that this has given you a little taste of life in the boarding houses in Morven, and it will mean that you'll soon be looking to visit as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Packham. It's wonderful here to hear so much that goes on in, in the, the boarding houses. Um, we'll now, uh, last but not least, absolutely, we'll hear from two of our pupils, Amy and Jacob. Um, Amy's currently in the 100, which is year 11, uh, and Jacob's in his final year, preparing for um, his exams at the end of the year in the upper sick, um, to give you a little bit about their own experiences. So we'll start off with Amy um, to uh, give her account of her time so far at college. Uh, so over to you, Amy. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Amy and I'm in the 100 or year 11 at Malvern and I'm a boarder and I'm in house eight. I joined Malvern in the FY having no idea what to expect, but I was warmly welcomed into the Malvern community. I quickly settled in and found the most amazing people and friends and I'm now find myself in the third year at Malvern. My house mistress, Miss Nardone, has always been incredibly supportive and kind as well as all my teachers. Coming from a Kenyan prep school into, the Malvern, into Malvern College was a massive transition, but I always felt supported by my friends and the amazing teachers here. The huge choice of CCAs 
and different sports has always kept me occupied. Morven has helped me nurture my love of hockey and I'm now playing in the Midlands under 17 team. I also like art and the art teachers always help me if needed. Aside from all the extra activities at Morven, the lessons are always interesting and the teachers are very supportive in and outside of lessons. Overall, I love being at Morven and can't wait to see the other opportunities it holds. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. Um, that's wonderful. And now to hear from somebody who's a little bit further on in this school, um, Jacob, who's one of our upper sixth boys, um, to let you know what it's like at, at the top end of school. Uh, and now he's approaching the next step going into to university applications. Jacob. I've had a, an amazing experience at Morven since joining the FY four years ago. And now I have the pleasure to talk about my experiences in the sixth form. So um, joining in lower sixth, I remember the refreshed confidence after finally getting those GCSEs out of the way, which have been looming over us for a few months. And sense of independence, we now get to wear and style our own suits, which is something I've probably looked forward to. And a re-established uh, enthusiasm, enthusiasm for our subject. As Mr. Horwood talked about, we can choose IB A-level or IB, and we're choosing subjects which we thoroughly enjoy and can see uh, ourselves pursuing a career in the future and which really drives and motivates us to make the most of every lesson. You cannot fall into a sense of security in the lowest if it's a very important year, even though there's no external exams. The first year scheme of work sets the foundation of what we develop and progress into the second year. And there is a key focus on preparing us for our university applications. There's many different talks from Mr. Gorsi, Mr. Reed, Mr. Horry, the senior management team about uh, different career paths you can go to. We're very fortunate in having a wide variety of university representatives, at university choice fairs, which give an overview of their university and we then have the opportunity to talk to them and ask questions. I would like to pursue a career in medicine and the school has prepared me excellently for uh, my application. I was fortunate enough to travel to Oxford um, to go on a day of lots of different activities. We talked to admissions tutors where I gained invaluable advice about personal statements and interview preparation. Uh, another example is I traveled to Concord College to take part in a medical conference. This is an entire day starting with medical lectures on a variety of different topics. And in the afternoon, it was an incredible experience. We had the opportunity to talk to a huge array of different doctors in slightly in different professions in, within medicine, such as orthopedic surgeons, dentists, um, anesthetists, um, general practitioners, and amazing experience to talk to all of these doctors and, and get their advice and information from them. I'm part of the medical society and I've been able to speak uh, to the Wheel of Venice Society about brains, which is something I'm very passionate about. I've also been encouraged to take part in essay competitions, which I think is really important as it stretches academically, pursue knowledge outside of our syllabus and really find a passion for our subjects. The sixth form is not all academics and stress. You have to find the right balance and have some fun as well. As Ms. Packham talked about, there's so much going on. Um, longing on a Saturday in the sixth form centre is something everyone looks forward to. I'm heavily involved in the, in the CCF. Uh, that occurs every Wednesday and there's always a variety of different activities. I'm in the RAF, I've been able to fly many times, which is an incredible experience. Um, go on leadership courses and also um, take part in STC competitions where we compete um, against flights from across the country, um, doing activities which, which are very unique, such as going on a range or doing section attacks or learning about casualty evacuation. And these are activities which can be difficult to access once you leave the college. So I definitely recommend utilizing all of that. I'm currently doing my DOV Gold very passionate about my music. I play the saxophone and the guitar and playing in the jazz band and concert bands has thoroughly improved my playing. Um, highlights for me are playing in, in the Malvern Priory, uh, the College Chapel and different informal concerts. Uh, we can go on tour with the bands. I played at the Free County Showground with the jazz band. At the end of last year, I traveled to London with the Chamber Choir to take part in Bernardo's National Choral Competition, which was amazing. And this just showcases the breadth of Malvern Whatever your passion is, Morven is able to support you and make sure you achieve the best of your ability. If it's music, if it's horse riding, if it's, if it's hockey, public speaking, whatever it is, you can, you can find your passion and really develop yourself. In the, in the upper sixth, there's many leadership roles on offer um, and different societies, pupil-led societies, which you can have the opportunity to lead. And just, just to give an overview, I feel inspired, supported and stretched 
academically in my personal development at St Malvern and I feel prepared for life after college and I couldn't have asked for anything else from Malvern really. Thank you. Thank you so much Jacob uh, and good luck with your exams uh, and your medical school applications. I'm sure you'll be great. Um, well, I'd like to thank both Amy and Jacob uh, for giving up part of their Saturday morning, which they'll have to catch up on in the lessons uh, afterwards, uh, to help us out today. Um, and before we go into some of the uh, questions from our audience today, I'd like to give a, a very quick overview of the entrance examinations uh, and the entrance processes for the different year groups. So pupils entering into the FY or year nine entry um, can come via uh, a few different routes. If they're at a prep school that offers the common entrance or the prep school baccalaureate, we accept both of those and we're very happy uh, to uh, liaise with schools and families with regards to those programmes. If you're already at a school uh, maybe a senior school or a state school or a school that does not offer either the common entrance or the prep school baccalaureate because you might be at an international school then you can enter the school using the college entrance exams and those college entrance exams uh, have the same basis whether you're entering year 9, year 10 or pre-sixth year, year 11 or into the sixth form. So there are two main parts. One is an online CAT4 reasoning test and the other part is an English test. For those pupils who are native English speakers, it will be a written English test uh, based within the, the English curriculum. Uh, for those pupils for whom English is not a, a first language, you'll have an English as an additional language test. And from this year, we're introducing the Oxford placement test, which is an online test, plus a very short written essay of a very general topic. So there's no preparation required. The only additional tests that might be included are when we have pupils who are applying for the sixth form. And if you wish to study science subjects, design technology, sports science or music at A level or higher level, there'll be a short additional written paper uh, for those subjects, for those applicants. We'll also ask for references and reports from your current schools. And you'll also have an interview with uh, a senior member of staff. For younger pupils, we'll have lots of uh, admissions events that you can come to, get to know us, get to know the other boys and girls who might be joining in your year group. And for older pupils, there's the opportunity to arrange visits and taster days in school. So I hope that's clear. Uh, I appreciate there's a lot of information to take in about the entrance process. So if you have any queries at all, please don't hesitate to contact the admissions office directly. So moving on to the questions from our audience, um, I think the first question is for Mr. Metcalf, and it's asking what senior positions do women hold that are student facing? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I, I noticed that actually when, when we started this, that uh, some of the senior faces here are, are male. Um, actually, it's a very balanced mix. So the senior deputy head, uh, Sarah Angus, uh, is effectively the person who's running the school day to day. Uh, so she's obviously female. Uh, and on the other members of the senior leadership team, uh, we have Mrs. Swart, who is head of the lower school. So a key person for all the pupils coming in. She does all the transition working with the prep school heads. Uh, and all the transition working closely with the admissions team. Uh, so she's a very important people, person for all of the pupils. Uh, she does all the induction with them. Uh, by the time you're in the sixth form, uh, Mrs. Akehurst, she is in charge of the, the IB. So she's on the senior leadership team as well uh, and works very closely with Mr. Holroyd running the academic program there. Um, and then we have two others on the senior, females on the senior leadership team as well, Mrs. Ricks and uh, Mrs. Bale, who have a mixture of ones on the academic side, one on the pastoral side, supporting the various teams in different ways there. So it is a very balanced uh, senior leadership team, although it just happens that the way lessons were, we, we were available to, to speak today, that it looks a bit more male orientated, but it, it really isn't. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Metcalf. Um, uh, and now quite a pertinent question for current times, and I think this one will be for Mr. Faulkner. Um, what arrangements has the school taken um, to ensure uh, the health and safety of pupils uh, with regards to the COVID-19 situation? Uh, lots uh, is the short answer. It's, it's been a busy summer, as you'd imagine. Um, we've been working right through the summer. We've, we've had a working group uh, planning all aspects of, of return to campus. In fact, we've had pupils back in school from the 16th of August uh, in quarantine. 
and we've had pupils arriving actually over the last few weeks. Uh, we're very lucky to have an additional boarding house facility, which we've set up as our COVID centre and as our quarantine centre. Um, but aside from that, I mean, extensive, as you'd imagine, really, uh, we have 250 uh, stations around the school uh, with hand sanitizers, cleaning stations, thermometers. So uh, uh, when people enter the campus, there's a health screening check. Uh, lots of, of changes to procedures for operating boarding houses and lessons as well. So one-way flow systems, social distancing, our pupils belong to various bubbles, uh, new co protocols for catering, for cleaning. Uh, there have been quite a few changes. However, having said that, our main aim through all of this is to try and keep the experience as relatively normal for our pupils as possible. So um, there have been a few changes for, you know, for pupils inevitably, uh, but uh, we've, we've done our best to try and minimise disruption from a, a pupil point of view in terms of their education and, and access to activities and so on. Um, one thing we have done in the last couple of weeks actually uh, is purchase our own uh, coronavirus testing system. Um, we were finding that when we wanted to have tests done, unfortunately, it was taking you know, a bit of a delay in getting the results back. So we've bought our own um, testing system. It's on the school campus. We can get pupils and staff tested now and results back within 90 minutes, uh, which helps us to make quick decisions. Fortunately, touch wood, we've had no positive cases yet. Uh, I'm sure it will happen, but no positive cases amongst the school community. Um, but we are prepared for, for if and when that does happen. Uh, our pupils were able to stay during leave outs. We had just over 100 people staying with us for the last leave out weekend. We have people staying with us for half term. Uh, so uh, extensive, um, extensive protocols and things in place to help us through through the pandemic. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Faulkner. Um, and uh, I think now an academic uh, query for Mr. Holroyd, if that's okay. Um, and the question is with regards to applications to American colleges and whether you feel that it is detrimental for a student to follow the A-level course rather than the IB course if he feels that they want to study at a medical school or sorry, at an American college. Both, both um, paths are a route to success uh, at uh, American schools. Um, part because, of course, the SAT test is, is a crucial part of that. So whether you're an A-level a pupil or an IB pupil, um, you, for a vast majority of the American universities and colleges, you'll have to sit an a uh, SAT uh, test, which, of course, you can do here because we're, we're a testing centre and we, we run a, a, an SAT uh, programme as well. Having said that, there are one or two universities in America now, NYU is a, a good example, that if you are following the IB programme, then they no longer require uh, the um, SAT um, uh, test to be sat. So yes, whilst both do uh, enable you to um, enter American University very successfully, perhaps in some universities, you'd have individual research, which we would be able to help you with, with um, the, the IB has a little more leverage or, or certainly gets you out of having to do the SAT exam. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Holroyd. That's really, really helpful. Um, in fact, this morning in college, uh, we have students and some external candidates who are taking SATs in uh, part of the school as, as part of that SAT preparation. So that is very timely. Um, and another question, I think, from Mr. Faulkner, um, and it's with regards to uh, learning support and how we support pupils within the school and how that works uh, inside and outside a classroom. Yep. Uh, we have a, a really good learning support team, actually. All pupils are screened when they enter the school, whichever year that is. Uh, so screening takes place, but also pupils are monitoring the whole time. Uh, so, uh, yeah, teachers are monitoring the whole time, monitoring our pupils. Um, and so as a teacher, quite often you might be contacted by the learning support department saying, we're just gaining information on this pupil. Can you tell us about this pupil? And um, so pupils, um, if they need learning support, le uh, learning enhancement, we call it, uh, they uh, a slot will be found in the timetable um, where they will go down to our learning enhancement department. We've got a team of teachers down there uh, to support the pupils, and that that support will be done in conjunction with teachers as well. So teachers are informed and supported in their teaching of a wide range of pupils, as well as pupils re receiving in, uh, individual support where needed. Thank you very much indeed, um, and. Uh, 
the, I have a question that I think I can answer, um, which is that will we be able to offer remote invigilation for testing for those applicants whose schools are closed due to COVID-19? Um, yes, the, the whole admissions process has been a little bit complicated by, by the uh, virus, but we are putting measures in place to make sure that pupils taking tests either in the UK or at schools overseas who cannot access a suitable office or can't take those supervised in their schools um, to sit those remotely. They will be supervised uh, by a member of the college staff via a Zoom webinar. So they'll be able to ask questions if they get stuck, if there are any technical issues at all. And there are days set aside for those during the first week of November. So that will be the Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday of that first week of November. And you're more than welcome to contact the admissions office for further details if you feel that that applies to you or to your son or daughter. We're very happy to help. Um, and another question with regards to the academic side for Mr. Holroyd, and this is if we have any particular recommendation of IB versus A level for anyone wishing to pursue a medical career. Uh, thank you. Actually, a similar answer to the to the American uh, question. Um, I think the key thing, if you're following a, a medical career, and of course, uh, Jacob, please jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, because Jacob is an A level student, but the key thing he will be doing is doing A-level chemistry and also a wide range of work experience. And so the same thing holds true for an IB candidate, high-level chemistry and a wide range of uh, work experience as, as well. So both routes are, are, are very, very uh, good routes to doing a degree, a medical degree. Um, it, the decision whether you do A-level or IB is, is, is not really based on what you want to do next. It's more about um, how you are as a learner, um, also, the, your, your desire to, or your ability to follow a, a, a breadth of subjects uh, as well, uh, or, 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 um, um, or, or you want to keep your options open with the IB as well. Um, or maybe if you're looking to do medicine abroad, maybe the IB might be more of a flexible option because uh, slightly more accessibility back in European countries as, as well. But both routes, certainly UK based, are, are very successful routes, very viable routes to, for a medical degree. Thank you very much. Um, I think now a question for um, Mrs. Packham as our house mistress um, on the panel. And it's with regards to, I think a two point uh, question. One is with regards to devices and access to things like social media um, and mobile phones and so on for the pupils. And also what the weekends are like and the numbers of pupils that you would expect to have in house uh, on a normal weekend. Okay, so um, first of all, we have um, our students have a particular bedtimes and so at 9.30, our year nines, which we call the FY, have to hand in all of their tech and then their lights go out at 9.45. And then at 9.45, the um, year tens, which we call remove, will hand in their tech and then they go to bed and their lights go out at 10 o'clock. And then the same thing follows 15 minutes later for our year 11s, which we call our 100, and they hand in their tech at 10 o'clock and their lights go out at 10.15. And then uh, anytime, so we, we then ask our sixth form students to go upstairs to their rooms at about 10 30 10 40 and then either the deputy or the house mistress or house master whoever is on duty that night will then do the rounds um turning out lights just knocking on doors gently saying to the sixth form who are working how much longer will you be it's time to start putting things down um and so it might be that they'll be told to stop working by 11 15 but they will still have their phones or their laptops but then the internet does shut off um so they can't have access to anything else online after that um at about 11 15 but they may still, if they've got a, an, an essay deadline and they just want, they've just got that one last minute idea that they think I must get this down, they would be able to carry on working, obviously just using their books and things and um, and, and using a laptop, but not with access to the internet. So it is possible to, to tr we do try to limit um, their usage. Um, and then they can collect their phones from 4.15 in an afternoon. So they um, can collect their laptops in the morning at 8.15 to take to school, obviously to be using their lessons. And then they take their, um, they don't have their phones and if they're lower school pupils until 4.15 in the afternoon. Um, and then the other question was about uh, boarding numbers. Because we're a full boarding school with day pupils, um, it, we do expect our boarders to stay here at the weekend. So we do have a really good program of keeping them busy and making sure that it's all inclusive for the boarders who are here, um, giving them the opportunity to, they don't have to get involved, but they can if they want to. 
Um, if there was a special event, then someone would be able to, to go home for that. Um, so I myself in my house have had, say, county cricketers or um, people in dressage competitions going riding at the weekend. At the moment, we're saying we don't want them to go and stay out overnight. Um, so they're just able to travel in the car with their parents wearing a mask and then go to whatever event it is. Um, but we, I have had people who will go sometimes if they've had a hockey match, um, if they live down towards the Gloucestershire area in Stroud and the hockey match has been down that way, then their parent might collect them after watching them at the match and then take them home overnight and then go to the county hockey thing in the Gloucestershire area that day. So it does happen sometimes, but certainly it's not the norm. And I would say that in, I've worked in a boarding school before and it did empty out at weekends and more than is nothing like that. It's, a, it's really quite a full community still at the weekend. Thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Packham. Um, and now a question, I think, for the headmaster. Um, uh, and it is with regards to um, pupil well-being um, and aspects of resilience and so on, and things that actually are, are very much included in the Malvern qualities. How do we embed these into the curriculum at college? Um, yes, that's a good question. Uh, and it's something that I think all schools are, are working hard to get better at. Um, I think lots of the, the, the schools like this did it but with, without really thinking unintentionally. And I think we, we are improving that system. I think a lot actually comes from the, the housings, from, from Fiona and, and the various house teams uh, and working to create that, that sense of home, community, uh, a place where they feel supported, where they feel known, where their individual pathways are, are plotted with them. So I think it starts there. Then within the curriculum, we have a program of life skills, uh, very much a, a PSHE program, which works very hard at just trying to make sure that the, the lessons that they have each week on the, on the timetable fit in with what is expected on the national curriculum, but are also very relevant to those age, those year groups, those ages, uh, the, the, the tricky situations that they're going through. So there's a week, week to week meeting with a tutor who will then take them through that. And then we have whole year group sessions, whether that's in a, in a school assembly or whether that's a special year group getting together, having lunch together and then discussing some of the problems. Sometimes it's an internal speaker, sometimes it's external uh, and really focusing on those issues. And every now and again, there's something like we're having with COVID where we're having to think differently and make sure that we are supporting our pupils in different ways. And again, it's, it's the benefit of a school like this is that we've got many different means through th that we can do that, whether it's through the house, each house has got trained peer mentors, so some of the senior pupils themselves, and we're doing training with our, our um, house uh, heads of house and, and the senior pupils in each house, again, to support some of the younger ones as well. So it's, it's a mixture of formal uh, and informal support for our pupils and, and, and helping them develop those qualities. Uh, and it links it then in very much with the whole curriculum here. It's about intentionally doing anything. When, when, I very much asked our team that when you're running a session, you're not just thinking about the skills you're teaching related to drama or to sport or to music. You're thinking about the wider benefits of leadership, of collaboration, of, of setting targets and, and supporting each other in those kindness, uh, resilience are all very much part of our Malvern qualities. Thank you very much, Mr. Metcalf. Um, and, and now a question for Jacob. Um, uh, although you have been in the school all the way through, um, could you let us know how the new students in the sixth form, how they integrate, do they settle in well, and what it's like for you to welcome new friends um, in that lower sixth year? Well, I think a great example is Marnie Pretty, who's one of the chapel prefects this year, and she started her career running at Morven. She joined in the lower sixth and was quickly integrated into drama and life around school. And I think that just showcases how welcoming uh, Morven is and how you can quickly get integrated with everything that Morven offers. Um, within houses, you're, it's a closely knit community and, and the cohorts in the, Pacific, the sixth one isn't too large, so you can quickly uh, meet a wide array of people. Um, as uh, Ms. Packham talked about, there's many house events, if that's coming over to the private side for, for pizza or talking in the common rooms, you quickly um, get to know everyone. And also I think the wide breadth of um, co-curricular activities that Malvern offers, the sport, the music, you quickly um, meet a, a large amount of people from different years in the school through those different um, CCAs. So I think people set in very quickly and quickly come accustomed to Malvern life. Thank you very much indeed, Jacob. Um, and uh, now I have a question with regards to the co-curriculum. So I think that 
um, Mr. Holroyd as Deputy Head Curriculum uh, could uh, help with this. Um, and there are a couple of different parts to this. So one is with regards to what we offer um, regarding things like water sports and sailing. And then more specifically, a, a question with regards to to how we work with students who are academically bright, but their main focus is sports um, with the aim of making their way into a professional sport. Um, how do we balance, um, uh, what are the balance and opportunities that are between the academic curriculum and the sports development of that pupil? And do we have any links to professional clubs? Uh, thank, thank you for, for both of those. Um, uh, the water sports, first of all, we, we have a, a, a really extensive outdoor pursuits uh, program. We have two full-time outdoor suits teachers here who, whose job, they, they don't, they're not classroom teachers, they do work in boarding houses, but th their job is to run a, a, an extremely extensive uh, set of activities. These are separate from the CCF, uh, whether it's Duke of Edinburgh um, or the, whether it's climbing, mountain biking, uh, a lot of canoeing goes on, not so much sailing at the moment, but lots of canoeing. Uh, we have a, a pretty active canoe uh, water polo team as well. Uh, last weekend was a leave out, so um, most most people were away from school. But over that weekend, uh, Mr. Watson, his team offered uh, there was canoeing at the the, um, the National Water Sports Centre in, in Neen, as well as mountain biking and, and, and climbing as well. So yes, there is a good amount of water sports, and one of his real strengths is is actually tailoring um, those outdoor pursuits to the sort of pupils we have. Um, and he's, he's constantly um, uh, expanding that. Of course, one of his greatest uh, water sports activities was um, stand up paddle boarding across the channel uh, with a group of pupils as we uh, moved from Morven to Paris, not last summer, but uh, the, the summer before. And we were the first school and probably one of the only groups of people so far to have gone across the busiest shipping highway in the world. Um, so yeah, we have fairly extreme water sports if you want. Um, looking at um, very, very able sportsmen and women uh, and very able academics, um, our curriculum is set up to um, make sure that it is all livable with. It, it, it's they, they all three parts of the curriculum, the super curriculum, the co-curriculum and the core curriculum all feed in and support each other. We, we have a significant, significant number of able uh, uh, sportsmen and women here who achieve very highly on, on that front, but also achieve very highly on an academic front. And we have strong links with Worcester Warriors rugby. So last night we had, on Friday nights at the moment, whilst we can't play rugby matches, we had three professionals in from Worcester Warriors, including England players uh, and ex-Wales coaches, uh, running a Friday night workshop with our rugby players. We have very strong links uh, also with Starport Hockey Club, uh, particularly for the girls hockey players uh, and many of our girls hockey players play uh, um, um, uh, Premier League hockey through them. Uh, we also have very strong links with the Worcester uh, uh, cricket team um, and in fact um, uh, two years ago um, our captain of cricket he left uh, a week after he left us he was opening the batting for Worcester against the Australians uh, having played under 19s cricket uh, here over, over winter and toured India and left with three A stars at A level. So we have a, 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 a player a program, an elite player program, which supports them through strength and conditioning and a specialized program, but is also very dovetailed with national setups and also uh, Premier League setups as well to design a bespoke program parallel with, you know, with, their, with their academic success. So we want them to achieve excellence, transformational excellence in everything they can possibly do. So it's not one or the other, it, it's both. Thank you, thank, thank you for answer, answer your question. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I think the next question might be for the headmaster, um, which is in light of the current global awareness around privilege, what conversations are we having with our pupils regarding this? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it is a really interesting area and, and it's one again that we are all having to work with. We are um, a very balanced school, I think, in general, um, given that we are still, uh, we have a, an elite system to get in. You have to get into a certain grade and there are the fees. We, we have a very large bursary um, uh, set up uh, and, and so we, we are as much as we can be uh, means tested in terms of bursary and needs blind. Uh, we have 
Uh, I'm not sure exactly the exact figures, but it, it is significantly more than I know other schools are in terms of uh, are how, how much is, is through bursaries. And I know of several pupils who are on full bursaries, that's 100%. Uh, so people who wouldn't be able to come here are able to do so uh, because the school is able to support them in that sense. And in terms of our, our pupils, they really do come from a, a wide variety of backgrounds. They are, they are not all the super rich uh, and from uh, just you know, the international jet set, they're from the local area, they're from, from all around. So, so we, we have a, a very much that at heart. Uh, in terms of what we're doing, again, the, the um, more than qualities that we have are much more about our, our personal attitude and it's a focus on who we are and how we treat others that is at the forefront of everything we do. The chapel prefects, including Jacob, uh, were, were leading assembly this morning uh, and they were just going through uh, quite a few of the issues that pupils go through and just reminding people that this is who we are. This is, we're all different uh, and we all come together and we're actually needs blind uh, and people blind. We just focus on supporting each other and the community. And I think that's a really good example. Again, it's through the houses, it's through our, our assemblies, it's through our day-to-day -day approach is that we don't make a big deal of it but it underlies everything that it's about the people uh, and who you are, not about what you look like, not about what you wear, uh, anything to do with wealth or, or economic, socioeconomic background. It's to do with who you are and what you do and the way that you treat others. Thank you very much, Mr. Metcalf. Um, I have a question now for Mr. Faulkner, um, and uh, it is what opportunities are there for pupils to attend faith-based uh, lessons or activities? Yep. Uh, so uh, we are Christian Foundations of School. Uh, we have chapel. It's a bit restricted now in terms of uh, which year groups can attend and when, but we, we do have chapel services uh, in the week for, for pupils. Um, we offer you know, religious studies as, as uh, subjects, academic subjects, um, but also within the FY year group in particular, uh, life skills, you know, touches on various relevant uh, topics as well. Um, we do support, we have pupils of all faiths and none, uh, and all supported. So whilst we expect all our pupils to attend chapel, we will support them as well in, in attending other places of worship. So for example, we do have pupils who might go to the mosque in Worcester, for example, uh, and we'll, we'll support that. Um, we do have a, a sort of side chapel as well, uh, which can be used by, by all pupils as a quiet space to just reflect or, or to pray um, in, again, in wh whichever religion. So I think that we are an open, tolerant community, um, diverse community, uh, and there are lots of opportunities there. And again, it's about supporting the individual. Uh, it's about good communication, about knowing the individual and supporting him or her. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Faulkner. Um, now, I think we'll go back to Mr. Holroyd. Um, again, I apologize for this multi-part question, but we may as well get you to answer the questions while you're here. Um, one is also with regards to the arrangements that we have in place um, around COVID-19 um, and how uh, lessons are, uh, are they, can they be done remotely? Are they recorded? How, what, what methods are put in place for pupils who are not able to attend classes? And what happens if we go into some kind of lockdown again? Okay, um, yes, it, it's teaching is very normal, but it's also very unnormal at the moment. It's, it's been a, an interesting challenge for, for all of us, for both teachers and pupils. Um, we were really lucky, actually, that before we actually went into lockdown, um, we decided as a school, both for teachers and pupils, to um, put in place a, a significant number of uh, practices and IT systems, which enable, would enable us to cope with um, both a, a, a hybrid learning uh, program and also a, a distance fully online learning program very, very quickly. And so at the beginning of lockdown, a number of pupils um, obviously decided to travel home early. So before we actually had to close the school in around March the 20th, we actually had a 10 day period in which pupils and staff uh, got into practice with, with the hybrid classroom. Um, and then of course we went fully into lockdown. So I would suggest to some, to some extent, we, we're, we're pretty expert at providing um, distance programs or, or hybrid programs. Um, for example, our upper six had uh, trial exams uh, here at the start of term, a number of pupils couldn't join us. Um, so we set up a full system where their examinations were done 
during time window slots uh, and then uh, scanned and sent back to us. Uh, we've had pupils, as Mr Faulkner mentioned, with us since the 16th of, of August. So we've had a number of pupils who have been quarantining uh, either with us or, or in the UK, uh, or maybe not be able to join us. Um, I've had a pupil who joined me yesterday from Nepal, uh, but he's been doing all of the lessons so far with me um, in a hybrid way. So I've been using Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams and OneNote uh, to provide materials for him. I've also been, he's been joining my lessons live through my, my laptop. Uh, we've also been recording elements of lessons. Um, our pupils are very used to using Teams and OneNote. Um, so um, if pupils haven't missed out at all. In, in fact, last term we were, we were really impressed with how our pupils and teachers working together uh, could keep uh, the curriculum, the academic curriculum and, and all aspects actually of the curriculum up and running. So um, yes, lessons are very much back to traditional class-based lessons at the moment. Um, there are one or two people still joining online and, and they're fully catered for. If we have to go into lockdown, either lockdown in campus with a boarding house or, or lockdown in a wider sense, we'll simply go back to the way in which we ran very successful lessons uh, during either the hybrid period in, in March or, or full lockdown last term. So yeah, we're, we're really happy with what we can do. And, and also perhaps most importantly, I think our pupils are very happy and, and, and we've, we've been very, very impressed with both their IT skills, but also those more qualities, the, the independence and resilience, which they need to take part in a successful hybrid or, or distance learning program. Thank you very much. Um, but I'm afraid there's no rest for the wicked, Mr. Holbrook, because the next question okay. is all for you. <laughs> You're doing so well. We just thought we'd give you all the questions. Um, and uh, it's with regards to um, drama. Um, is it viewed as a club or is it embedded as part of the curriculum and how strong the drama and literature departments are? And if we offer both A-levels and IBs in those subjects. Okay, well, dr drama is a, a real strength here. Speaking as a, a, a previous, I was one of the stage managers who, during my time, I actually took a production of um, Guys and Dolls to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, uh, which gave me the great joy of hiring a lorry, which I'd never done so before. I mean, drama is part of our academic curriculum. We have a, a very strong uh, director of drama. In fact, uh, Mrs. Packham's husband runs our drama department. Um, and so it's embedded in the curriculum at the FY level as part of a, a carousel with DT and art. Then uh, a, a significant number of our GCSE cohort take drama very successfully. And we have a, an A-level drama cohort. And also we have had a, an IB theatre studies cohort, perhaps not as many people in the IB doing theatre studies because of their choices. Although a good number of people um, will carry on with drama through the curriculum in, um, in the IB by writing an extended essay, maybe on film or, or drama as well. So the, through the formal core curriculum, there is a lot of drama. However, drama thrives, really does thrive at Malvern in the, in the super curriculum and in the, in the co-curriculum. Uh, we have a house drama festival every year, uh, which I, I find one of the most thrilling events. Over so about three nights, each of our 11 houses puts on a, a short play uh, in, in, our, in our superb, wonderfully um, refurbished theatre. Um, we also have a, a significant number of plays and musicals that are going on through uh, the year. Uh, we've got Sister Act coming up this term uh, with open auditions. So our drama scholars very much take part, but other, other pupils who are, are not necessarily taking academic drama or in our drama scholars will also um, um, join in, in with those. Um, uh, and, and so, yeah, I think the drama is in, incredibly strong here. We've a number of pupils have gone on to be uh, professional uh, actors, whether it's Denham Elliott or Sally Okafar is uh, quite a, a well-known uh, act actor at the moment. Um, the current casting director of the National Theatre is actually an ex-pupil of ours who uh, started his drama career with us, did not do it as part of the academic curriculum, did it very much as, as the co-curriculum. Uh, and, and now if you want a role in the play in the UK, he's, he's probably your person to see. So. I, th I think drama and literature is very strong indeed. Thank you very much. And now we have a question um, from Edward, who's age 10. Um, and this is a very important question. Um, and we might go to Mrs. Packham and then maybe to Amy um, about this, a two part one. Um, which house has the best chef? So which house has the best food? Very important question. <laughs> Mrs. 
happen. Well, I have to say um, that our chef has been with me in uh, number three for 10 years. And um, certainly the girls of number three would tell you that he is without doubt the best chef. Um, and he actually, um, there are occasions, I, I, I shouldn't really say this, but there are occasions when my son, who's in another house, will find out what's for supper and will say, uh, mom, can you save some of yours? Because I know that your house cooks that thing particularly well. Um, and so it, it, there is, it, is, it is a competitive thing. And I know that I'm sure Amy will say that her house has the best chef and Jacob will say that his house has the best chef. And I think it's rightly so that there really is, as I said, the chef is, is part of the, the house and really part of the, the big family. Um, but yeah, certainly with it, with, there's no doubt our chef is, with, in my opinion, definitely the guy that will go the extra mile for my girls. Excellent. Um, Amy, do you have an opinion? No, you're in a number, you're number eight, aren't you? So you're in a different house. So I am. As Miss Packham, competitiveness. Yeah, as Miss Packham was saying, the food, yeah, it is really good. I would say our chef is the best and they have a huge range of salad and then the main meals are really delicious as well. So yeah, I would obviously say ours is the best as well. I don't want to start anything. So you just agree to disagree on that one. Um, uh, and then um, one question for, for me, um, we've had a question about, is it possible to visit the school at present? Um, unfortunately, just at the moment, it isn't possible to make individual visits to the school campus. Uh, we are reviewing this on a weekly basis as um, we monitor the situation both inside of school and in the wider community, um, listening to government uh, advice and the education authorities' advice, as well as our own colleagues in other schools. Um, any family who wishes to go on our list to be contacted as soon as we're able to go live with individual visits, they're more than welcome to contact the admissions office and then we'll be in touch as soon as we're able to make those appointments. Uh, in addition, anyone who would find it helpful to have individual Zoom meetings with any of the members of staff or house staff or sports, drama, music, any aspect of school that you'd like to find out more about before you're able to actually come for a tour and a visit, we'd be very happy to set that up for you as well. Now, I appreciate that some of you also taking part today uh, do have some individual appointments um, booked for a little bit later this morning. Um, and uh, I hope to speak with some of you then um, as well. Um, just to let you know, we are hosting on Thursday a scholarship webinar, so an information webinar uh, related to our 13 plus scholarships for entry into year nine, as well as the sick form scholarships for pupils who are joining in year 12. Um, that will take place at five o'clock on the 8th of October, and you can book a place via the uh, microsite, which is Malvern College Connected. .co.uk. Um, you'll hear uh, a lot about the background of scholarships, how to apply, what those assessments will be, and you'll also have the opportunity to speak with uh, individual heads of department and make individual appointments with them to find out more about your own chosen discipline. I'm so sorry if we weren't able to get to your questions um, this morning. Uh, you're more than welcome to please contact admissions at malvermcollege.org.uk. We'd be very happy to answer any outstanding questions or put you in touch with other members of staff. Um, we will be hosting uh, visits uh, before too long. We very, very much hope to welcome you back to our beautiful campus, um, but we will be continuing with these virtual events uh, to give updated information and to give guidance through the admissions process and any application information that you might need. Um, we'd like to thank, I'd like to thank my colleagues and especially Jacob and Amy for their time this morning. I hope that you're looking forward to getting a bit muddy and wet in this afternoon's activities um, and I wish our audience a restful and enjoyable weekend. Many thanks. <laughs>